Hello everyone, Amanda here from scrimpymommy.co.uk and I'm here today to start my Christmas crafting and we're going to start off with a beautiful, really, really pretty but very, very simple Christmas card and, you know, as always I'm going to use Stampin' Up! products to make um, a most beautiful card and show you just how easy it is. So I'm starting with an A4 sheet of Thick Whisper White and on the long side here I'm going to cut it at 5 and 7 eighths. Okay, and that's then given me two card bases from one sheet of A4 card. You'll have to excuse the background noise, it's terribly, terribly noisy here in Amanda Land. We've got builders and car alarms and all sorts going off, so um, just bear with me. So I'm just going to fold that in half and burnish it. Um, you can use your scoreboard and if so you want to score it at 4 and 1 8. Okay, and that will give you your card base. Okay, so I'm just going to... Turn off my computer so that I don't get messages. <laughs> right, so we're using um, Feels Like Frost. And while I'm here, I'll just quickly show you how I store my new papers. I cut them to six by six because I, you know, the seasonal ones, I get paper shares. So I cut them all into six by six and I store them in these plastic wallets, which work out at about 10 pence each. Okay, and then when the um, catalogue's done, I'll take these out, what's left. They go in a retirement box, and then I reuse these folders for my next set. Okay, very, very cheap and easy. I make the little labels on my label machine, and I have a little cardstock front so I can see what it is, and I make these from the cardstock that is in the back of your DSP. Super cheap and easy way of doing it. So I'm using Feels Like Frost, which is the beautiful photographic... Um, you know, wintry backgrounds, beautiful, and I'm picking that one, and I'm picking that because it's pink and I love it. That will be my next one, <laughs> and I'm going to make a heap of cards, and I'm probably going to use that paper up in about a day, making heaps of lovely cards, because you don't need very much else. The paper is that beautiful, you don't need much. So my card base is um, 4 and 1 8 by 5 and 7 eighths. so I'm going to trim this paper down I want to make sure we keep that leaf reeler so let me decide which way will be the best for me um, that way so I'm going to cut this to I'm going to I want to really show off that paper so I'm only cutting a very small increment so 5 and 7 eighths. okay I've cut that the wrong way. Oh, I've cut it the wrong way. Not five and seven eighths. It wants to be five and seven eighths that way. Oh, I've cut it the wrong way, but I've only, I've only lost that sliver. So let me do it again. Five and seven eighths. No, five and three quarters, I beg your pardon. On the, there, on for the long side, because I want my card to stand that way. Okay, easy mistake to make, easily rectified. And then I want it four inch Yep, exactly four inches wide. So let's have a look. If I cut it right there, that's going to be all right, is it? Mm. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take a sliver off of that side. Okay, I'm not wasting much. I'm just taking a sliver. Okay, because I want that pink leaf to be the focus. So, that, so I want it, all of it on my card. Okay, so then I've got these little slivers left. Now I can use those in a card design. That can go on a tag. It won't get wasted. Um, and I've got the beautiful image exactly as I want it. All right, so I'm going to attach that on the back. I'm actually going to use tear tape. Let me just grab some. And the reason I'm using tear tape is because the back of that is metallic and it'll take longer for my glue to dry so you can glue it but it'll take a bit longer because it's a shiny surface so I'm using tear tape today like I say bear with me with the background noise <laughs> I think one of my neighbours is having an extension built on the um can I say for me it kind of knows I think it's the garage so maybe they're having a lot of people do end up extending upwards from garages and having extra bedrooms so we'll just have to go in and bear it I do apologize such is life 
<laughs> I do work from home. I don't uh, have a separate studio, so you get all the hustle and bustle of day of my daily life. <laughs> so we're going to attach that nice and carefully remembering that we've got a very tiny increment so we do need to be careful and look at that already that is already a beautiful card i'm just going to zoom in ever so slightly so you can see a bit more of that detail beautiful photographic element there now what i'm going to do is if it's not bunged up which it shouldn't be because i do look after it let me just check no. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to very carefully with my fine tip glue pen just go around the edge of that pink leaf. Okay, In a bit of a broken line, it doesn't have to be precise, but I'm just going around the edges with that. All right, And then I would, after this process, I'll, I would leave it to dry, but I'm going to have to continue. So... Um, when you do yours, just leave it to dry in between. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of the new ice stamping glitter and it'll just give a sparkle to the edge of those pink leaves and also a tiny little bit of dimension. So let me just bring in some spare card. Okay. And I'm just going to gently tap that over where I put the fine tip glue pen. It's almost the consistency of granulated sugar. That is almost how how big these granules are on this glitter. It's very lovely. Um, so, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently press down with my bone folder to make sure that that has sunk into that um, fine tip glue. Okay, and then I'm going to very carefully. Um, and that has left a lovely little sprinkle just on the edge of those um, leaves. It's very pretty. And because it's so large and chunky, the glitter will really catch the light. Um, it'll just be that little bit extra special. Okay, doke. <clears throat> so now bear in mind, mine is wet. When you've done this process, if you do this card, leave that to fully dry before you continue with your card. So what I'm going to also do is I want some baker's twine on there, but the one that I've got is quite chunky. It's a bit of a chunky monkey. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the strands because I don't want I don't want all that thickness. So I'm just going to separate it. Probably take two strands, maybe. Okay, and I'll if I could, if it don't get all knotted up, I will anyway. Right, so now I've got my two strands, it's just that little bit finer and a bit more delicate. Alright, and I'm just going to wrap it on the inside of my card there. And I should just have enough. I just pull it, there we go. And tie that in a little, a little knot. And I'm going to tie it in a, another knot and I'm going to have those those straggler ends out I quite I do quite like that but I'm just going to trim it ever so slightly okay so I've got a more delicate going on there and what I can do is I can if I want to further separate those strands just at the top just for a bit of added effect maybe at the bottom as well Okay, all right, and I just want to separate those strands. I'm just going to do it very gently with the edge of my scissors. I can separate those strands. Um, that looks super pretty. Right, so what we need now is we need a sentiment. Now, because this is beautiful photographic paper, we don't want to cover over it. So therefore, I am using vellum. All right, and I'm going to put my sentiment on the vellum, and then when the vellum's on the card, you will still be able to see the beautiful card underneath. Now, the sentiment that I've chosen um, is from First Frost. Now, um, you know, this is called... What's it called? 
feels like Frost DSP. This is in their Autumn Winter Catalogue. And First Frost has been carried over from last year. So I'm getting my money's worth and I'm reusing it. It's in the Annual Catalogue on page 140. So some of you may have this already, which is why I've chosen it for you today. And I think I'm just going to go for a small sentiment, actually. I was originally going to go for this large one here. Mm. I don't know, will it will it show? I don't want to cover up too much of that image. I'll go for the larger one that I originally planned. Okay. I will. So let me just grab a block. Oops. I've moved my camera around ever so slightly in the hope that um, we can get a bit more light on the situation. So let me just open my blinds further, but we're coming to winter, so let's see if the lamp will help. I'll add the lamp today. And I'm using basic grey, and I'm going to be very careful, you can stamp on to um, vellum absolutely easily, like you just need to be careful. So, plenty on. I've just got one sheet there, I have plenty of that grey and I'm going to stamp in the bottom corner but not right up in case I decide I want to punch it or die cut it and just lift it off very carefully has that I'm not it's not terribly straight I'm going to do that again <laughs> my sticker mustn't be as straight as the stamp reckons on so let me do that again there we go I'm happy with that now now you could emboss onto it you could do what you want I'm just going to use that basic grey because I want that nice soft look but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to whiz over it with my heat gun to make sure that that ink's dry so I don't smudge it on the vellum and spoil it right so there we go and then do I want to punch that out? I think I might see if the everyday label will fit. Because that is a lovely shape. So let's have a look. I've not really, can you tell I've not really planned past this part? So let's have a look. And that fits beautifully. Um, and we've got a nice shape there. And this is the beauty. This is why I collect all of the punches. Uh, because the shapes always come in handy and uh, you know they're brilliant I love them so we've now got our sentiment so how am I going to attach it now you've got to be careful with vellum you know I've done it before and you can sometimes see the glue through when you've done it so this is what I'm going to do I'm going to be super super careful and then I'm going to cheat a little bit so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a glue dot I'm going to get my perky tool I'm going to select a glue dot and I'm going to gently roll it in my fingers okay, until it's a little bit smaller and then I'm going to put it back on my um, perky tool and I'm going to very carefully put it in the very far corner on one side and then I'm going to do the same and put it in the very far corner somewhere else um, we'll just go there for now in the top corner okay and then you put your sentiment where you'd like it. Mm, I quite like it there. I think I'm just going to have it there. So it's just slightly over the... Let's just pull that strand over a bit further. That's it. And we'll have it just there. So one corner over the strand and the other corner at the other side of the strand. Being careful in case my ink's still wet. So... So there you go, so you've stuck it on with glue dots. So now to cover that up, if you don't have glue dots, use glue. And if it's not 100% clear, what we're then going to do is, we're going to cover that up. Is that straight? I'm not convinced that's 100% straight. Let me just lift it over. That's the beauty of glue dots. You can move them about. So that's what we do there. And then what you can do is, you can cover it up. <laughs> very, very carefully with sequins or whatever so I'm just going to put a tiny dab of glue there on my glass mat and I've got my turkey pick tool with my little um, putty on the end and I'm going to select some sequins so there's one that I want 
Okay, and this can be a little bit faffy, but it's worth it. So let me select some sequins. I'll just tip them out and I'll clean them up later. That'll be easier. So there's one. Pick it up with my putter. Dab it in the glue ever so gently, very gently. Okay, and then carefully place it where the glue dot is. Okay, very carefully and leave it to dry. Okay, and then do the same at the other side. So let's select another. If you've got self-adhesive stickers, uh, sequins, that would be even easier. Um, like I say, it can be, you know, you've got to take a little bit of time and be a little bit careful, but it's worth it. Because you're going to end up with a beautiful, beautiful card. There we go. And what I'm going to do just to balance it, let's see if I've got any more. There's one. I'm just going to stick another one up there. And the trick with these is to dip them in the glue and then set them to dry, just leave it to one side to dry and just give it chance and it will, it will dry and now it is absolutely throwing it down now. <laughs> We're having about 10 seasons in one day here and I'm going to stick that one there and you set it aside to dry and there you have yourself a very beautiful card with some soft vellum, that lovely chunky glitter and some beautiful, beautiful sequins. And that is not difficult. Um, you can easily create that. You just need to um, take a little bit of time and leave the things to dry in between. So I hope you like that. I hope you'll give it a try. I'll um, leave um, you know a list of all the products that I've used over on my blog at scrimpingmommy.co.uk. You'll find the link in the description box below. Go and have some fun and take a look at this beautiful um, paper. Feels like frost. It's absolutely stunning. Bye for now.